Welcome to Market Matters. I'm Nadia Hassan together with Charlotte Chong. Uh, we're doing our companies in the news and of course the broker's call today, but I will talk to you about the overarching theme. It's an overarching theme full of trees, essentially palm oil trees. Because as Charlotte was alluding in our earlier segment, mm -hmm. Malaysian oil palm inventory has reached a record high. Basically, you want to make it easy, output just out, you know, outstripped uh, exports. So what for, happened for is visit. palm oil inventory actually rose 7.29% to 2.83 million tonnes. And this actually put pressure on CPO price. Last check was still below 2,500 ringgit per Exactly. So hence why we come to our first repeat offender. And not to deluge them, I mean, we, but we have talked about them a lot before. We're talking about Felder Global Ventures Berhad. And this share price actually dropped about 3.63% to 1 ringgit 86 today. But it's been on a spur, 62% since the lowest mm -hmm. it saw in August. It's now at levels that it hasn't seen since they announced a certain deal. No, actually what happened is uh, when we look at news, they said that FGE is actually planning to revise the, the price that they are going to take over. They're going to buy Eagle High Plantation, the TBK, along with Sugarcane Plantation from this company called Raja Wali. Yes, the kings, the Raja Wali's. I mean that the fact is this deal, as I was alluding to in, mm -hmm. in, in air quotes, is the fact is... This deal was highly controversial, massively controversial. Got to the point where FGV had to, and I've said this so many times before, I know if you're, you're listening to you're a bit tired of it, the fact that they did videos to sort of protest their mm -hmm. deal. Now with Ringgit at so low compared to the USD, the price that you promised back then is not going to be the price you promise now. So the reason why the share price actually improved was because they said they might ask for how much? How much were they saying? 30%. About 30% discount. Now EPF actually came out and said they are concerned about a deal as well, saying that it's too costly. Now, when we look at the earnings, net profit actually down 69.7% in second quarter to 46.1 million, but revenue up 7.7% to 4.2 billion. And it seems that the price of CPO mm. is still going to be a little bit under pressure. El Nino or whatever aside, the fact is, I think it, it's going to be tough to sell this to your shareholders. To say like, look, I think this is a good asset, fine. But is it a good asset if you are alleged to overpay for it? And there is that one little niggling rumour that maybe they call it off entirely. I think a lot of people will breathe a sigh of relief if they call it off entirely. But it, And never mind the fact that FGV themselves have missed two of their mm -hmm. self-imposed deadlines to close this deal. Do you think they can finalise the deal by the end of this year? Looking at it, it's only one month left. I'm, I'm still hoping for a good gem in the holograms movie. I don't know. Uh, maybe I have a bit of false hope. I mean, who knows? But uh, they have still to the end of this month. Mm -hmm. I'll give them a benefit of doubt. I'll give anybody the benefit of doubt, except for the guys who made that movie. Anyway, the fact is, just to bring it all home, FGV has been on a tear since August, uh, up up something 60, like up sixty percent. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, but however, the Eagle High deal still weighs on them, and now the rumors are coming out whether or not it might be aborted, or maybe the fact is it's going to cut by thirty percent. Regardless, people still are concerned. But moving on to our broker's call of the day, as we are continuing on our plantation kind of theme, Syme Darby Berhaden. This uh, share price actually dropped about two point zero five percent to eight ringgit and thirteen. So what uh, we each chose like research houses. What was your research? You will be here, and she came out report today saying that they maintain a hold with target price eight ringgit, but they are still holding on neutral to negative outlook on this company. So what they actually said is earnings could be affected by lower production due to unfavorable weather. Now, I, I know that we have been you know, experiencing wet weather in KL for the past few days, but when we look at you know, Indonesia and also some of the exposure for Saim Dhabi, it's actually still under dry spell in some parts of the, the, the land in Indonesia. So that's a complete contrast to what MIDF is seeing. Because I looked at MIDF, they did the half, uh, the glass is half full kind of uh, mm. analysis. They maintain their buy, they have 910, which of course at the current valuations is almost a dollar up. And they say that uh, the upcoming 1Q results should be within expectations. They were possibly raving about the FFB, which is fresh fruit bunch uh, production. Mm. It's about 12% year on year and they said that's a amazing because everybody else in their universe, let's just be clear, their universe, meaning who they cover, is only like 1%. So who do you want to believe in this situation? Now, MIDF also says something that with uh, MPOB coming into the picture, overall FFB production will improve. But UOB say although it will improve by 15%, but this will only offset by the decline in production in Malaysia. You're talking about NBPOL, is it? NBPOL. Yeah, so that big uh, New Britain Palm Oil Limited, which they closed back in March, which has mm. proved quite a, you know, quite a big boost for them. But I think that if you're looking at Syme Darby, of course, they're plantation guys. MIDF was a bit more critical on their other stuff. They said mm. that 
they expect the rest to be okay. They they said, oh, unexciting. I say oh, boring. Uh, <laughs> industrial division earnings they say likely to decline. Local mm -hmm. prices, which means actually lower equipment deliveries and product support sales, they're not positive at all on the property. They say okay. you know lower profit due to low unbilled sales. You know it's it's uh, one point two eight billion at the end of two thousand fifteen, mm -hmm. but it's actually less than what they did last year. And motor also, they said fairly flat. But UOB actually say Better Sea project has been well received. When you look at all these three phases have been rolling out in, in London, it say it has garnered high take up rates in, in London. But look at automobile segment. Um, now, they say flat. Yeah, so rumors have been saying that you know um, they will actually list their automobile segment soon. But oh. listing is likely to put on hold due to weak market sentiment. We actually have a report on the front cover of today's uh, Financial Daily, if you're still reading it. The fact is, a lot of companies apparently are cancelling their cash call. They say the market's mm -hmm. way too uncertain at the moment, and which means they think it's not going to be subscribed. I mean, it's a fair enough. It's fair enough. Expect, MIDF is actually expecting one mm -hmm. final thing, about 19 cent worth of dividend by year end. But we'll see, because it's going to be the end of November before we get the numbers. So just to sort of uh, wrap it all home, Sime Darby is our broker's call for the day. We have two shares shareholders, uh, sh well, sorry, two research houses that are looking at it. MIDF maintains a buy with target price of 910. Yobi Kehan maintains their hold, but they're slightly a bit more negative, neutral mm. to negative outlook. We'll have to see when the earnings finally come at the end of this month. But that's all that we have. I'm Nadia Hassan together with Charlotte Chung. If you want more on the stories we talk about, the Edge Markets is always there for you, as well as the physical copies of the paper. We had a good rest. We hope you had a good rest. Now with Petronas, let's see what tomorrow brings. Good luck.